Yes, it hasn't been used in a while. There she is, very cute young frilled dragon. So here it is, and we're gonna dump it out. Let's check out our hides and stuff. Oh no, she slipped away. Hey everyone, what is going on? Today we're gonna to be making a bioactive terrarium um, for my young, young frilled dragon. So here we have a 40 gallon breeder style tank and you can see it's kind of a mess. It hasn't been used in a while. Substrate's old, covered in fe old feces, some plants and stuff, this one piece of cork bark. So first things first is we gotta hose this all out, but let's see, I'll show you guys who's going in here. So I do have a larger um, adult male frilled dragon and this is a younger female that I'm hoping she can live with him eventually. But right now, you I would never wanna put them together just because of the size difference. So he's almost full grown, you know, with tail length, well over a foot. Um, and she's just back here, if you move in. There she is, very cute young frilled dragon. And she's just in this 18 by 18 by 18 and she's been here for like a week or two. And it's, I made this terrarium, actually there's a video to making this kind of a rainforest type look with the manzanita wood and the ficus and the moss. But it's not really built for frilled dragons per se because they need lots of, you know, climbing branches and hardy plants. And this, like ficuses aren't too sturdy in terms of climbing for frilled dragons. So until she can reach a larger size, I want to put her in this 36 by 18 by 18 um, tank. And the great thing about this tank is she will definitely not be in this her whole life, so don't worry, she will not be full grown in this tank. She just needs to reach a certain size so that she can go in a very large enclosure with my um, other frilled dragon. But even past this tank, I want her, I want this tank to be usable for other things. So we're gonna set the, the drainage barrier, the the substrate, the bioactivity, the plants, and then get it ready for, you know, a future, possibly crocodile skinks, maybe a young juvenile uh, skink, or blue tongue skink. So yeah, there's lots of different options, but we want to sustain this for a long time, and it will be a subtropical to tropical terrarium build uh, with mist kings, live plants. So first things first, is we got to clean this thing out completely, so let's do that. So here it is, and we're gonna dump it out. And then give it a rinse down. Okay, so right now we're just dr making our drainage, or washing out our drainage layer. I like to just use a pea gravel combo. Oh, horse fly. And I think this looks pretty good and it's a lot cheaper than clay balls. So we're just rinsing it out. Okay, now we have a nice clean tank. I washed it out. I cleaned the lid, which is outside still, but now time to get in our drainage layer. So like I said, Let's get those pebbles and gravel in as our drainage layer. So our drainage layer is in. We got a pretty thick couple inches of pea gravel, and actually I think it's another type of gravel as well. And that'll help with draining out the plants because this is gonna be a humid setup with you know a mist king hooked up. So we don't want the plants to sit in pretty much water. We want them to be able to drain out, and then the bioactive crew will you know take down any mold. So yeah, now let's get our mesh in, which will cover it up and separate it from the substrate. Okay, before we get into the hardscape, everyone, so I did get the uh, the substrate, 
completely in. So there's a mix between, it's, I always kind of use the same substrate for most of my enclosures. It obviously varies if it's a tropical or arid habitat, but typically for my bioactive, oh, well lighting's weird. Typically for my bioactive, uh, tropical, subtropical setups, we'll go garden soil, cocoa core, uh, peat moss, and sphagnum moss leaf litter. And I put the leaf litter in at the very end. And of course, then we also add in our bioactive crew. Let's check out our hides and stuff. So we have lots of different pieces here. So we have, we have cork, we have branches, driftwood, grape wood. I'm gonna kind of experiment here and see what we can do. And then of course we have our live plants, which I'll get to at the end. Okay, so I think I kind of found something that I like a bit. We have our one large cork bark piece, which is, which is actually off the ground here, so we can go underneath. Um, we have some branches here, some driftwood. Um, this is some grape wood, I believe. And from the front, that grape wood is gonna look like a tree, because you won't see, obviously, the top. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I think I'm liking this. We have our rock here. Now let's get our water dish in, maybe, and our plants. So maybe your plants first. So I'll show you guys which ones I want to use. So our first plants, are these Schifflera. So this is actually one plant that I broke up here. So let's just, it has a very tropical look, the Schifflera arbicola, also known as the umbrella plant. So let's, uh, let's just start planting it and see where we go with it here. But we could actually probably put it up front here. Okay, so I think our plants are all set in place. Now let's get our moss in. So remember, we're gonna have probably two Miss King nozzles, probably one here and one over here. That's why the pothos in the back, um, they'll probably get the majority of the water and then I can, I can always, I like to get the plants established. At first I'll hand water them for a couple days and we'll see where the water gets distributed. Okay guys, so I think the terrarium's coming along pretty nicely. You can see we put a moss layer down, and I love moss just because it not only makes the tank look a lot more vibrant and alive, because it is alive, and green, but it also holds a lot of humidity, so it'll help keep that humidity up, which frill dragons actually really like. They're not like bearded dragons. They do live through dry seasons, but to, when they really come alive and become active is in those wet seasons. Um, of course, it depends on where the frill dragon's from, whether it's from New Guinea or from Australia. But yeah, this pothos back here, this thing will grow quite well and it'll spread too, so not worried about that. Now let's just get our dead leaf litter in and then I think we're just about ready to go. So last thing, our leaf litter. So guys, just know what everything is in place now. We just need a water dish in, um, the lighting, and then later on I'm gonna set up the misking because I wanna, whenever you put new plants and substrate in an enclosure, there's an initial humidity spike. So we're gonna let that kind of pass by and then get the, the misting out later. And we also covered up the sides with a black uh, cardboard as I do, just to make it look more neutral and to cover up the glass a bit. So yeah, let's get our water dish in and then our dragon. Here's the final look of the terrarium with all the lights on. So we have, 
This is a very young Frill Dragon, so I only want to use a 6% Arcadia UPB um, T5. And then we just have a normal uh, basking spot halogen bulb, which will get our hotspot to around 95. We don't want anything too extreme for the lighting because, like I said, very young lizard. But when they're adults, you can go up to 12%. So yeah, we have our water dish we put in. Now let's just get our dragon in here. So let's make our way over here. Move this ladder up the way. And remember, now since we're freeing up this tank, she's in here. Hey girl, come on. You'll like this enclosure, I promise. Oh no, she slipped away. She's very agile, but you can see she's kind of at the max size for this tank in terms of the branches because she's getting she's gonna get too big and she's very small right now, but she's growing well and she has a little extra shed on her chin there. So here she is. And I'm sure she will definitely enjoy this enclosure until she goes even in even a bigger one. So there she is. And that is gonna wrap up the video for today. So that is our frilled dragon setup. And you can see she's already basking right out there in our bioactive, pretty naturalistic, and I'd say humid terrarium. And now, like I said, we have this terrarium, an 18 by 18 by 18, that we will be transforming into a milk frog enclosure, but it does need a few more hides and adjustments but that's for another video. So thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Until next time, peace. See you guys next video.